Welcome to the Change Command Ceremony for Camp Lemonnier. I'm Commander James Duvall, Executive Officer for Camp Lemonnier, and I'll be the Master of Ceremonies today. While the Change of Command Ceremony you witnessed today is not prescribed specifically by any U.S. Navy regulations, it is a unique product of the rich heritage of naval tradition. Custom has established that the ceremony shall be formal and impressive, designed to reinforce the respect for authority that is vital to any military organization. The heart of the ceremony is the formal reading of official orders by the relieving officer and the officer to be relieved. Command passes when the relieving officer states, I relieve you, and the officer being relieved responds, I stand relieved. This simple procedure signifies the transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one individual to another. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, the parading of the colors, the national anthems of Djibouti and the United States, and the invocation. Bosun, host the side boys. Camp Lemonnier, arriving. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Navy Region Europe, Africa Central, arriving. Color Guard, parade the colors. Color Guard, attention, carry colors. Ready, cut. Forward, march. Left turn, march.
color guard. Retire the colors. Chaplain Sorensen will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, you provide for all our needs. We give you thanks today for the gift of leadership. We thank you for giving us Captain Krauss and for the care she has provided to the people of Camp Lomigny, to our partner nations, and to our host nation of Djibouti. Accompany her as she transitions to new forms of service elsewhere. May your spirit also rest upon Captain Kensa, who will now lead Camp Lomigny. Grant her diligence in leadership, energy in service, clear vision, and sound judgment. As we transfer the responsibilities of this command, Grace us with your presence, so that we may be renewed in our work of service with honor. Amen. Chaplain, thank you. Military personnel, on cover. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Commander, Navy Region Europe, Africa, Central, Rear Admiral Collins. All right, good morning, CODJ. Welcome, honored guests, our Djiboutian leaders, allies, friends, family. Scott, good to have you here. And the men and women of Camp Lemonnier. Thank you for your attendance today at this change of command ceremony as we recognize the accomplishments of Captain Suzanne Krauss and welcome aboard Captain Eilish Kensel to CLDJ. The Navy's and the United States Department of Defense only permanent operating base on the African continent. Your attendance honors all of us here, demonstrates our collective commitment to regional security, and stands as a testament to Captain Krause's tremendous impact while in command. As we transfer authority, responsibility, and accountability of Camp Lemonnier, I want to thank the personnel who day in and out work hard to accomplish the priorities set forth by Captain Krause. To all of the sailors, present here and on post today, including the 80% of the uniformed staff who are reserve sailors, thank you for your commitment, professionalism, and the tremendous sacrifice that you and your families make, which directly impacts the overall success of our mission in Africa and around the globe. A change of command is a time-honored ceremony which gives us the opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments of an outgoing CO and to look ahead to the future tenure of the incoming commanding officer. Now usually after a change of command, the new CEO has a little bit of time to settle in, but it wasn't the case for you, Suzanne. It's been almost a year to the day since you took the helm here at CLDJ, and as you all know, it's been a whirlwind tour. Within a few days of taking command, President Biden ordered the evacuation of the United States Embassy in Khartoum, Sudan, in response to an escalating civil war. That order was then expanded to assist in the departure of American citizens and designated personnel in the region. Within a matter of days, Suzanne postured the base to prepare for a joint U.S. surge response. And within 24 hours of notification, this critical CLDJ team provided security, food, shelter, and religious accommodation to the evacuees as they awaited transport to the United States. 
Through Suzanne's leadership, the team here supported 358 sorties, 188 evacuees, 1,600 passengers, and 2 million pounds of cargo. All of this while ensuring zero mission interruptions. It was truly an amazing feat, one in which she quickly earned the call sign, Crisis, and it really was just the beginning of what she would see in command over the next year. In that same vein of emergency response, Captain Krauss worked with the Jabushans to create an integrated airport emergency service response and also created trilateral training opportunities for American, French, and Jabushan firefighters. Additionally, her participation in Exercise Bull Shark allowed U.S. forces, European Union naval forces, and the Jabushan Navy and Coast Guard an opportunity to conduct joint crisis response and personnel recovery, further expanding our capabilities and interoperability. Throughout all of the aforementioned events, you also had a base to run. You commanded nearly 800 military, 1,700 contractors, 25 civ civilian personnel, and the 38 tenant commands who are on this base you assisted each and every day. You and your staff managed a $73 million boss contract, $37 million in assets, and the largest U.S. Navy overseas dispersing office. You were responsible for providing 24-7 air operations, port security, housing, a galley, recreation, and utility services for more than 5,000 personnel stationed here. And you met every challenge head on with steadfast determination. Whenever there was an issue, I had no doubt you would find your way through it or around it, and you would improve this base for the future. Your AFSEN is by far the most diverse and operational of the Navy's regions, and CLDJ the most dynamic of its installations. There is no one I would have rather had in the seat than you, Suzanne. A leader who kept her team focused on meeting its operational requirements, all the while taking care of everyone deployed here. Our CNO talks about war fighters, war fighting, and the foundation. And to you, Suzanne, along with all of your sailors and officers, know that each of you exemplifies what is meant by those three words. On top of all of that, you use your diplomatic skills to cultivate positive relationships with allies, partners, and the Djiboutian government. You also maintain routine interaction with our allies stationed around Djibouti and represented the United States in nearly 100 multinational distinguished visitor ambassador level events. Suzanne, your impact is evident. It is clear by the people here today and the relationships you've built throughout Djibouti and across the region that you have the innate ability to inspire an impeccable work ethic, and you are a leader who will be sorely missed. You've led this team through so much, and I thank you for everything you have done and everything you have given to them. But there's been a cost that goes beyond just what I've talked about here. It comes from others as well. Being away from your husband, Scott, and your children, Rebecca, Jenna, Liberty, Scout, and Fletcher, who I'm sure are ready to have you back, it's a huge sacrifice for everyone. Family is everything, and we could not do their job without your, their support. Thank you, Scott, for all that you did to support Suzanne so she could do all those things I talked about. Service to the nation has its costs and its sacrifices that loved ones pay for without recognition, medals, or awards. And though my wife can't be here with me, please know that both Carrie and I acknowledge and truly appreciate the invaluable support families provide as our Navy and its sailors answer the call to serve. Suzanne, you've done an incredible job. Fair winds and following seas. Eilish. I want to officially welcome you to CLDJ. From your past deployments, I know that you fully understand the environment that CLDJ finds itself in, and that experience will serve you well as you assume command. You have an incredible team of sailors, soldiers, and partners in this room. Rely on every one of them. As instability across the region continues, this next year will be unrelentingly fast-paced and unpredictable. I'm excited to see you operate in such a dynamic environment, and I know our relationship with Djibouti and all of our partners here will continue to thrive under your watch. As you get ready to take the seat, I feel it is important to remind ourselves 
why we take the time to recognize your assumption of command. In my view, selection for command at any level is the ultimate compliment to an officer, a responsibility like no other. And if done correctly, with your heart and soul invested, it is the hardest and the most rewarding job you will ever have. I would like to paraphrase the following from the latest U.S. Navy Charge of Command. The responsibility of command is absolute. You remain accountable for both the action and the inaction, as well as the outcomes that make your team better. You are absolutely responsible for every aspect of your command. Eilish, the mantle of leadership is now on you. Suzanne, thank you again. Your leadership has been an inspiration to the team. I can feel it in them when I talk to them, when I walk around. You are the right person at the right time to navigate all of the challenges that CLDJ has faced over the past year. I leash the challenges remain, and the world itself, especially in this AOR, stands on the precipice of even greater danger and challenges. Continue to build on the foundation, train and protect your warfighters, and stand ready to lead our warfighting efforts if called upon. I look forward to seeing you continue to build on the foundation of success that has been laid here as you take the helm. Thank you all. May God bless the United States, our partners and allies in the United States Navy. Thank you. Rear Admiral Collins, thank you for your kind remarks. Captain Grouse, front and center. Rear Admiral Collins will now present Captain Grouse's end of tour award. Guests, please stand for the presentation of the award. Military personnel, attention to award. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Legion of Merit, Gold Star in lieu of second award, to Captain Suzanne J. M. Kraus, United States Navy, for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding services as Commanding Officer Camp Lemonnier, Djibouti, from April 2023 to April 2024. Given this 16th day of April, 2024, signed C.S. Gray, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Installations Command. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my honor to introduce Captain Krause, Commanding Officer, Camp Lemonnier. Good morning, and welcome to Camp Lemonnier. Admirals, generals, ambassadors, charge d'affaires, honored guests. I want to begin by saying thank you to Lieutenant Rabilla and everyone who played a part making this ceremony a reality. It is a big lift, and I am humbled by your efforts. Post One Marines and the VMM sailors and the color guard, sharp as ever. Thank you. Admiral Collins, thank you for entrusting me with command of this installation, which is critical to supporting our fleets, tenants, and allied operations in this region. Thank you to our Djiboutian partners who have joined us today. You have shared your homes, your customs, and your history. I have now spent two years of my adult life in your country, and I am so appreciative for your hospitality and your friendship as we've worked together toward our common goals of regional security and stability. Thank you to the foreign partners and allies who join us in these common goals, who have joined us here today. To the leaders of Camp's 38 Tenant Commands, what you do here in Djibouti and the Horn of Africa matters and it has been an honor to support your work providing the joint force with shore-based responsive options for conflict and crisis response. Command Master Chief Heave and Commander Duval, you are the goats. Thank you for being by my side, supporting me, advising me, and personally taking on the burden of command. I am grateful to have had such an amazing triad. 
Thank you to my family, my parents, and children, whose unwavering support enables me to take the hard jobs halfway around the world. I've worked here to support a mission that I believe in, and your sacrifice was not in vain. To my husband, Scott, who's here with us today. Scott, can you stand up? I would like for you... I would like for you to look behind you to see the joint forward deployed team that daily enhances the peace and deters our adversaries. This is the team that I have supported and who have supported me while standing the watch. Thank you. Scott, I have been mobilized for 507 days today. That's 507 times that I've said I miss you. 507 times that I told you I love you, and 507 times that I promised you I would be home soon. And in the months after I return home, we'll send Fletcher off to his first Navy midshipman cruise, move Scout to Korea for her year abroad, commission Liberty into the Navy, visit Jenna in her new home in Montana, and give Rebecca away in marriage to Clayton. Scott, my favorite place in the world is with you. Thank you for sticking with me. Now, Admiral Collins went over some of Camp Lemney's major milestones for the past year, so I would like to spend some time talking to CLDJ staff, sailors, civilians, and contractors of Camp Lemney. I have been unavoidably transformed serving as your skipper. You are the Navy's most critical asset, and you have been my strength and my sunshine. Your commitment to our mission and our Navy is visible every day in the work that you do and the motivation that you put in. I know that as skipper, I see you at your best, but I want you to know and believe that your best is pretty remarkable. It has not been an easy year. In fact, it has been quite challenging. This commitment to service requires sacrifice. Over the past year while serving, we have lost parents and grandparents back at home. We have had children born back at home, some mid-tour, another within a day of leaving for Djibouti. We've had sailors study for and pass their professional engineering exam, while others deferred their acceptance to medical school. We've had sailors graduate from the corporal's course and sailors who have run the famed Grand Barra. We've also had nearly 50 sailors and Marines push forward and play hard, securing a win in the last 30 seconds of camp's Army-Navy football game. I hope there are some still here who remember that day. I am so proud that I got to call you my team, and I have no doubt that each of you will go on to do incredible things in your careers and in your personal lives. I leave here better because of you. I leave. Welcome to Djibouti. You have a CLDJ team here who is trained, resilient, bold in their actions, and ready to ensure that from the shore, our Navy can support, develop, and deploy the world's most capable joint force. You will undoubtedly continue to face challenges in the AOR this year, but I am confident that this tremendous team, under your leadership, is ready to meet these challenges with honor, courage, and commitment. Sailors, I ask that you continue to support one another. I ask that you continue to give your best and rise to the challenge of the mission. And for one last time, as your Camp Lemonier skip, I ask, who's crushing it today?
Um, All please uh, remain seated and uncovered for the reading of the orders. I will now read my orders. Bukers, orders number 0413. When directed by reporting senior, detached in April 2024 as commanding officer, Camp Lemonier Djibouti, and report to commander U.S. Naval Forces Europe, Africa. I will now read my orders. Bukers orders 05261999. When directed, return to active duty and report to commanding officer Camp Lemonier Djibouti as her relief. Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer, Camp Lemonnier. Bonjour and good morning. I would like to echo Rear Admiral Collins and Captain Krause in expressing my gratitude for the attendance of our many distinguished guests. I'm honored to assume command of Camp Lemonnier here in Djibouti. I know how important this installation is to regional security and stability in the Horn of Africa, and I look forward to continuing our long legacy of partnership with our Djiboutian hosts and regional allies. The warm embrace I have received since arriving in Djibouti has been overwhelming in more ways than one, and while I will soon adjust to the heat, I hope. I know I will always be responsive to the camaraderie and mutual support I have encountered in the past two weeks. Merci beaucoup. That being said, I believe the most awesome thing I've witnessed since arriving is the complexity of the operations of this camp and the professionalism and expertise of all those who work to ensure those operations run smoothly. Suzanne, your team here operates as a well-oiled machine. And the genuine respect and admiration you have for them and they have for you is inspiring. I hope I can fit into the hole you leave behind and continue to serve the camp as well as you have. To the sailors, soldiers, and airmen of Camp Le Monnier, I am energized by your dedication and your ability to make the most of the environment you are in. I'm committed to being a positive contribution to an already positive command. There are two things I would ask of you. First, that you respect one another we cannot be successful as a force if we do not see the humanity of those around us and appreciate the daily challenges each of us face. Second, I ask you to remember the ancient Roman proverb, Fortes Fortuna Iuva, which means fortune favors the bold. We see evidence of the truth of this proverb throughout history, and specifically in the history of the U.S. Navy, from John Paul Jones to Dora Miller, our galley namesake. America has a long tradition of boldness, and I challenge you to continue it. Be bold. Make a difference while you are here. Try something new. Step out of your comfort zone. Embrace that feeling because it is in that space that we grow. I know that my time here will push the edges of my comfort zone, and I look forward to sharing that experience with each of you. I would like to say again how humbled I am to be in this position. Let's have a great year. Thank you. EXO, take charge and carry out the plan of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction. Let us pray. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces, our civil servants, our diplomats, and our contractors who serve our country at home or abroad, especially those who live here at Camp Lemonnier. 
Defend them this day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Surround them with honor. Give them courage to face the perils that may come their way. And grant them a sense of your abiding commitment wherever they may be. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our change of command ceremony. Captain Krause and Captain Cancel would like to invite you for refreshments in the rear of the room. Thank you for joining us today. Rogue yarn. <laughs>